will shock you. I am shocked. Shot! I don't know if you've picked up on this. I'm not really one for hucksters, shysters, self-help gurus, all that kind of just fraudulent bullshit. Bullshit. That people peddle out there online or in books or whatever. And yet, I, Janine McRae, once did a transcendental meditation course up at the old Santa Cruz TM Centre. You might be like, well, why? Why would Janine who doesn't believe in any of this malarkey, why would she go do a transcendental meditation course? A couple of reasons. First, I love David Lynch and he's always going on about it. This is a donut. But more importantly, I'm... I don't know if you've picked up on this too, but I tend to have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> they come in and then they fight with one another and sometimes I've got to like really fish in there and figure out and you separate, separate them, stop them fighting, work out which ideas are worth pursuing, which ones need to go stand in a corner, that kind of thing. Nobody puts baby in a corner. So I thought that if I learned how to meditate properly, I could perhaps learn how to manage thought better. Because really, meditation is just defocused focusing. You're learning to focus on not focusing. Shut up and get to the point! Today, we're going to talk about the power of the unmoored thought. <laughs> Meaning a thought that was once moored upon the shore of you is untied and let go adrift to uh, explore and find itself on the open seas before venturing back to you and coming into land. Literally, land. Not like an airplane, but like land that we're all standing on. I mean, you get the concept of Earth, right? Isn't that a light chicken gravy that you just... It Most people do. Except the flat earthers. Let's stay out of those waters. That is an alarm to the Geekiverse. Because there's a lot of stuff going on in here and it's very noisy and I can't, you know... It's actually one of the big reasons I just don't... I don't uh, partake in the uh, illicit substances. Because um, I have a very tenuous grasp on my thoughts. And the last thing I need them to do is to wander off unchaperoned. Oh Janine, if you just, you know, tried weed, you could probably have great thoughts. The burning weed with its roots in hell. No, no. I'd be one of those people that would take a trip. How to reach the five levels of consciousness. Never! And my mind would just never come back. Pretty sure that'd be me. So I, I look for ways of figuring out how to wrangle my own thoughts without the assistance of... Uh, I don't know why I'm justifying Hippie Janine. Hippie Janine deserves to exist. I sat in a room with a woman and it was very quiet and it smelt kind of weird and there was an offering, dipping a piece of fruit and a white piece of cloth, I think. We sat in a room and we had a bit of a think see and, and then uh, this woman who had been in the presence of the Maharishi himself, she was quite old. Infinite happiness. Uh, back in the 60s, she uh, gave me my mantra, which I can never tell you. Okay, I'll tell you. The thing is, you know, when you have a lot of thoughts that are happening and you need to separate them, the problem is that a thought will come and it could be something, but before it gets a chance to work out who it is, another thought comes. And then, like, that one will go away. And this one will be like, I'm the most important thought. What if I had been able to develop that other thought? So that's why I did the meditation. I'm not aware of thinking about anything else. When you do that course, you watch a couple of videos or whatever, but there's this whole thing where they draw a picture of like, okay, here's the surface of the, the, the pool and you're at the top. And as you start to meditate, you begin to kind of like float down. You're deeper and deeper and deeper. That's actually not the thing that inspired this post. There was something else that the woman that was leading the uh, meditation was like, if you're getting frustrated with how you can't stop all the stuff in your mind going while you're meditating, think of it as your thought is walking along the road. And as you're walking along, other thoughts will come and join you. Let them walk along with you for a little while and then they'll walk away. Just walk away Thoughts come in, they walk with you, they walk away. Long story short, because I'm rambling. Overriding the talking mind. I was inspired by this idea of like, if you have a thought and it's tied to the dock, 
you should let it float out to sea and have a little adventure. Let it become all cast away and Wilson-ish well and, done. you know, figure out who it is in the great grand ocean of life. And then when it's ready to come back, you can be a lighthouse to all your ideas that are out there floating and be like, signal, signal, come back into shore. I mean, lighthouses are supposed to stop you running aground. So really, I am mixing the old uh, symbolism here. It's a bit of an era. What? 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 Who gives a shit? Lighthouse, flashing, come this way, come back to the shore. The post itself, the structure is pretty simple. You start with your thought tied up at the dock. It's like struggling. It's like, I want to become something more than this little thought that I am. So you like undo the rope. Push it off the dock and then, the, you know, the waves of the ocean will be pushing it in and out and it'll further, go further, further away. You must wish your idea good the voyage and hope that it comes back with, like, experience and not scurvy. This man's got Maybe. scurvy. Off and out to sea, it's excited about its adventure and what's ahead because it doesn't know what's ahead. It's the big, wide ocean of possibility. It could meet all sorts of things out there. And it will. Drifting and dallying in the dilly of the wash, drifting clueless and formless and innocent, the jagged contours of the world recede from its view, sharp teeth against the skyline of knowingness. That's just watching the mountains disappear, land disappear, as the thought drifts away, like I'm drifting away from this microphone. <laughs> what a glorious thing performance is. <laughs> and I perform for you. You know, when you're meditating, it's like you don't really know what the session's going to bring. Close your eyes, you breathe, you start to get into it. Creating a trance for ourselves. And I have had varying degrees of success with meditation. I've had some truly sensational experiences. And then other times you're like, this is so dumb, so pointless. <laughs> what a waste of time. Very frustrating. So as you're getting out there, you'll be floating on the ocean with your thought and then all the sea creatures will come. Like I said, with the, the road, with the other thoughts coming in to walk with you. That's essentially what the sea creatures were, whether it's birds or whales or porpoise or turtles, like things coming up to you to distract you. And you sort of commune with them, you work with them a little bit, but ultimately the ocean's a big place, they will drift away. Your thought bobs along. As it goes, you're still sort of easing into the idea of working out what you are as a thought. The unmoored thought breaches and lulls as a yawning potato in a mild boil pot. I was just thinking about when you put little baby potatoes in a, a pot that's like, you know, sort of semi-boiling and they do their little lazy roll. It's like a thought, you know, in the ocean. It's like rolling over, floating, because you're buoyant. It's still a happy thought. What will I become? I mean, you're following me, right? I do sound like a self-help hippie guru piece of bullshit. So you gave all these hippies permission to be here? Think your own thoughts. Make up your own mind. You can read all that stuff, but ultimately, those books don't hold the answer. I don't hold the answer. You hold the answer. Oh, my God. I should write a book called You Hold the Answer or The Unmoored Thought. See, now that's some bullshit. The unmoored thought becomes a million tiny pinpricks of light, the fingers of God reaching deep beneath the surface to touch the faces of the willing. You know when you're underneath the water and you look up and the sun is there and you just see the light shards coming down? That's thought looking for purchase to touch the faces of possibility. I use the word possibility a lot. It's a bit of a crutch. I think that's what keeps me so optimistic. This world's optimistic. Then the wind picks up. Oh my God, there's a storm at sea. What? What will happen to the thought with the storm? The winds come, the Sirocco, the Cape Doctor, the Mistral. You know, there's a type of fan in Australia called the Mistral fan. I think it was renowned for blowing up, blowing up and burning down houses, I think. As a Mistral employee once told me. As good as your fans. Tism song. Storm comes, wind picks up, ideas getting bashed and battered, but it's coming into its own, working out who it is, waiting to be found now. It's waiting to be rescued. And that's when you've got to bring it back to the shore. You've got to throw out your little lifeline. You've got to bring it back to the dock. Turn on your little lighthouse light. Be like, hey, over here, land's back this way. Come on. Come to mama. There is light upon the shore, and that is you. 
bring the idea back. Land ho, we are becoming, coming in to land. Skip, 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 skip all this bit, as always. So I started the piece with as always and I finished it with as always because as always, your ideas have to begin and they have to end. And somewhere in between there, there's a whole lot of swimming and floating about. So this idea learns to swim. I am mixing the hell out of metaphors and symbols and all that sort of shit because I can. You can't stop me. Nobody can. I got no props this week. Nobody will ever notice that. Yeah, I like being able to hold up a bit of paper or something. I really just don't have anything. Uh, until we meet again next week, please be sure to push all your ideas off the dock, willingly or unwillingly. They actually all want to go. They all want to have a float about in the uh, salty sea where they're very buoyant. They all want to have their toes nibbled at by um, Remora. And then they all want to come back eventually. You should try a transcendental meditation. Get your mantra. I forgot my mantra. It does have its place. It really just teaches you how to prioritize thought. If you're someone like me who has too many thoughts happening at the same time, just ricocheting around the brain like a ball bearing. It's all ball bearings nowadays. It can be a good way to just calm things down and be less agitated and actually focus on something for a short while. It doesn't. It doesn't work all the time. I mean, I'm always going to be this way. Okay. We're out.